I don't think it's just me personally either. Because last night, after prayers in our synagogue, at the crown of our mountain, I was able to pull myself out and go to, to prayers. And, uh, and I was speaking to my very dear friend about what I've been going through. And I opened up to him because I've always considered him like the strongest, most solid guy I know, or one of them. And I told him what's happening. He said, brother, that happens to me too all the time. And I was like, you, you, you cry, you break down and cry. He's like, yeah, I do. And I try not to fight it. I try to just experience it and let it wash over me and realize that it's part of something much greater. And I said, what do you mean by that? What do you mean it's part of something much greater? And he said, uh, he said, are you watching the news? Do you see, are you watching the news? Are you seeing the chaos that's going on out there in the world? There's a spirit of fear and confusion washing over mankind, and we're a part of it. Just because our bodies look separate and disconnected doesn't mean that we are disconnected. We're all one. You're simply feeling that chaotic energy of the world flowing through you. He's a spiritual guy, and he was speaking in those terms, and of course this is true. But I, I, I realized that I've been so caught up in my own pain, in my own fear, in my own experience, that I was just disconnected from the greater picture. And so as the dust began to settle a little bit, I decided to take a look around to see who I can help as so many people have helped me, just to see who I can pray for as so many people have prayed for me. And well, in our world, you do not need to look far. There was just a great tragedy that has struck America, a, a dramatic, devastating tragedy. You probably know what I'm talking about. It, not only for America, but for the Jewish people. And this is, of course, the predominantly Jewish apartment condominium in Miami, Florida. That uh, you guys shake your heads if you know what I'm talking about. So it, it, it seemed to spontaneously collapse last week. Can you imagine? This, this isn't in some third world country. This happened in an expensive upper middle class neighborhood in Miami right next to the Jewish community. Immediately in the Jewish world, the prayers began and the dread took hold and everybody's wondering, who do I know and who do I know that knows who I know? Everybody called their friends from Miami and of course Israel immediately sent an expedition of IDF officers, search and rescue teams to help rescue any survivors that there may be. As we do for all natural disasters, by the way, all around the world, whether they're from friendly countries like America or adversaries like Iran or Syria. And during a CNN interview with the IDF search and rescue delegation, I saw something which caught my eye and impacted me profoundly. And uh, it was a five minute interview, but I'm not going to share the whole thing with you. I'll just cut out the first minute here for you to see. This is a, truly a global rescue effort here with engineering and specialists from around the world joining local officials. With me now is Colonel Golan Vak. He's an Israeli Defense Force commander who is leading the Israeli rescue team here. Commander, thanks so much for being with us and thank you for the work you're doing. You just came uh, from the pile. You've been working overnight on the site. I can still see the dust on your boots, which our viewers can't see here. Uh, give me the latest in terms of what you're finding. Uh, at the last 12 hours, we found some more people. Uh, you, found, people, you found more bodies? We found people. Okay. Unfortunately, they are not alive. Uh, we found some more tunnels, and we scrolled uh, at night in, in, in those tunnels. And uh, there are, from one hand, new spaces that we find, and from the other, we found more people, but unfortunately not alive. So did you hear the, did you hear the sensitivity in his voice? the compassion, the love for every person, not just every Jew, but every person. Could you hear that in his voice? It was so moving. And you may have caught what I caught. Twice, he refused to say bodies. It wasn't just semantics. When this holy man uncovered one of the victims of this tragedy, he didn't see a body. 
he saw a human being created in the image of God whose soul has departed from within them. <clears throat> Every one of them is unique and holy. Every one of them is an entire world. And thank you. Every one of them is an entire world. And, and in a world that's more and more changing the meaning of words to separate us and to divide us, to hear such deliberate usage of language for a holy reason, it touched me and it made me proud yet again to be such a, a part of such a sensitive and holy nation. And while Colonel Vach humbly diverted his focus from it throughout the interview, it's clear that he had not slept in days and that he had no concern for himself. You know, we can ask ourselves why this is happening, and we should. Building collapses in America are not common at all. And for it to happen, Dafka, in, a, in the heart of a Jewish neighborhood, should give us pause and, and strengthen us to, and strengthen us to, consider this, another Rare building collapse happened yesterday in Buffalo, New York, as you can see right here. And so what is this all about? All of a sudden, two building collapses? Why is this happening? We can't definitively know why. I'm so sorry about this. I'm so sorry. I figured out another way. You don't need to keep shaking your arms if you don't want to, but I appreciate your understanding. I see, Ardell, you're saying it's okay. Don't worry about it. I appreciate that. We're going to try to figure it out for next time. But, um, but we should try to make sense of it. We can humbly seek understanding. One person, seek, a friend of mine wrote, to, what, why is this happening? And he gave some reason why it's happening. And instead of everybody saying, we don't know, we can't know the way God thinks, all of these people were, were making suggestions. One person seeking to make sense of it, he wrote this. We are crushing one another. We are trampling on our fellow Jews. We are not respecting each other as we should. Our Father is sending us pain, for through our own pain, we become sensitive to our brother's pain. We all need to increase our Ahavat Yisrael, our love for our fellow Jew, and our Yerat Shamaim, our fear of heaven. Yet I pray that the merciful one will only will see only our merits and send the Redeemer to help guide us back to be the Am Segula. And so that was really beautiful for me to, to, hear him, to hear him say that, because that's really what, what it's about. It's about praying that Hashem just sees the good in us and that we can only do that by seeing the good in each other. And then another person wrote this: God sends calamities to the Jewish people to awaken us to do tshuva, right? To repent. Each individual knows what he needs to improve on, and we cannot tell others what they need to repent for. We need to make an individual accounting of our own faults and work to fix them. Repentance is done in three steps, as explained by the Rambam. Number one, remorse and regret what was done wrong. Number two, resolve to never do it again. And number three, Express this verbally and ask for forgiveness from Hashem. That is a Jewish way of coping and contending with pain and darkness in the world to try to make sense of how we can refine ourselves. So I don't really know why it happened. Uh, the thought that I had, maybe God is telling us that the foundations are crumbling, particularly in, in America, that we must stop putting our faith in bricks and mortar, or the works of our hands. I don't know. It, it isn't for us to know, at least not definitively it's not for us to know, at least not beyond the shadow of a doubt. Yes, we should seek understanding and insight. This is true. But uh, we should seek to hear what God is telling us. But more important than that, we need to put our own interests and ourselves aside and think about God and his honor and about the health and the well-being of our fellow man. This highlight was taken from the Land of Israel Fellowship. Every week, hundreds of families from literally around the world come together on our live Zoom sessions to strengthen each other, to inspire each other, and to learn Torah from the Land of Israel, in which we connect the dots between the Bible, the Hebrew language, and the confusing events of our times. 
go to www.thelandofisrael.com backslash fellowship or click on the link below to join. Thank you.